Welcome back to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really glad to have with me once again David Wolf. And David's been with me um, several times in the past uh, talking about um, Avino Silver and gold mines. That's uh, it's a favorite of mine. It's a company that's done very nicely. It's growing. It's producing uh, more silver and uh, will soon be producing some gold, I believe. But we're not going to talk to David today about... Avino Silver and Gold. We want to talk to him about another company that he heads up called Coral Gold Resources. Uh, so, uh, David, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Jay. Always good to talk to you, but this is really an interesting time because I, I have a lot of questions that I wanted to ask you about off the air and just didn't get around to it until now. But um, I should tell our listeners that your stock trades in Toronto under the symbol CLH, and you can buy it down here in the States as I have under the symbol CLHRF. Uh, there's 47.8 million shares. I saw a price of around 27 cents U.S. today, and a uh, market cap of about 13 million dollars. If my arithmetic is uh, is right, does all that sound sound kosher to you? Yes. Okay, so I've got those numbers right. Well, David, uh, the it's big lot, news. Yeah, about 13 million U.S. and the 13, shares and the yeah. shares issued will be reduced when Barrick oh. returns the shares they own. Yeah, I want to get to that. Um, yeah. In fact, I think you're going to be down to something like 43.65 million shares. I mean, in this day and age, to have companies reducing shares instead of uh, watching them grow exponentially is really an achievement in a sense, uh, and we want to get to that. But So you, the big news here, of course, is that your sale of the Robertson property in Nevada to Barrick Gold. Uh, can you talk about the Robertson Gold property? Uh, your father headed up the company for many years. In fact, I traveled, was on that property with your dad, uh, oh, maybe a decade or so more than that ago, back. Um, and it, it borders a Barrick project, a very big one there. So talk to us a little bit sure. about the Robertson Gold property, what Coral has done over the years with it, uh, sure. and, uh, and then why are you selling it, and what are you getting for it? Okay, so... I mean, uh, Avino, or Coral, sorry, was uh, incorporated in, in the mid 80s. Uh, a prospector approached my father, and he was a famous prospector, and he was uh, tinkering with heat bleaching in this area. And, and so my father acquired it, and, and over the last several decades, we've had various partners from AMAX Gold and Placer Dome, and um, there's probably been about 20 to $25 million spent on the property. and. Um, there's a, a resource of 2.7 million. Um, um, some of that is oxidized, some of that is sulfides. So I <clears throat> basically, you know, from what I've learned from Avino is building a mine, <laughs> it takes a lot. So sure. our company, our market cap was basically decimated during the downturn, and that was because we had no news flow. The Bureau of Land Management required us to do an environmental assessment because we operate under a plan of operation, and this is not considered an exploration property, there was an old leach pad on the property, so they hold us to a higher standard. So during the last four years or so, we were studying the bugs and the bunnies and the migratory habits of the birds. So the stock that went down, you know, to where it is. So um, last year, I uh, we got it the EA approved, and I, I did a deal with Barrick, and they, they they did some drilling on the on the what we call the Goldridge claims, and then they decided to terminate the agreement. This is before gold woke up, so they yeah. were cu- cutting budgets, and they sure. hit five feet of an ounce at depth, but they decided that was too small at that time. <laughs> So I asked them, I said, what would it take to put this into production? I said, I've got a five-cent stock. How am I going to raise $100 million? Because that's yeah. what our PEA calls for. And yeah. it's 1350 gold to get a 15% IRR. So, but for them to do it on a grand scale without the CapEx makes that IRR go way up. So mm-hmm. they looked at it from an internal uh, point of view. And sure. they looked at they have a long-term uh, forecast of gold at, uh, using 1250, and yes, it's above that now. But they can't look at current. They they set it every year, and uh, mm. at the end of last year, their long-term forecast was 1250, and they publicly stated they need things um, projects to meet their 15 percent hurdle rate at any stage of development. So they went through all the data and all that information, and we started negotiations about six or seven months ago, and we got to where we are now. So the deal is they're giving we, – we talked them up. I mean, they, they, they offered us a lot less than what we announced, so we've, we've got um, 
about 15.75 million uh, U.S. coming in. Mm -hmm. We asked them to return the shares that they own, so that, in effect, makes this deal more valuable, if you look at the percentage on it. And the royalty, and and originally the royalty was set using their 1250 forecast, so they they couldn't afford to give me a bigger royalty um, because I would, again, I, I asked them to look at this, so this had to go up the, the category um, or the ladder to the Business Development Committee. So yeah. <laughs> the guy I'm negotiating with, he goes, if you keep asking for more, it won't meet a hurdle rate, and we can't recommend it to our committee. Yeah. So we got it up to as high as we could. We put a, uh, a scale on the royalty, so it ladders up. Uh, every $200, it goes up, and uh, we can get up to 2.25. Uh, percent, and 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 this is uh, this could be a company maker. Um, if you look at our PEA, we knew it was going to take six or seven years to build a mine. So how would Coral be able to do it on its own? You know, sure. there's there's just no way. There would be so much dilution to the shareholders. Sure. And they said they'll have it up and running in five years, and that's why mm-hmm. we put in there a trigger where they have to pay an advance royalty starting in in five years. So it mm-hmm. puts pressure on them, and they said if they can get it up and running sooner, they will, but because of the environmental the impact statements they got to do, yeah. it'll take time. Mm-hmm. So they're going to start uh, covering uh, Robertson in their MDNAs and quarterlies, which I think is coming out tomorrow the next day, and they're not going to say much for this year, but it'll make it in the budget for next year, so they're going to go gangbusters. They're going to you know, do everything required to put it in production, so we're, we're, we're very excited. Look at Look at what the royalty on South Pipeline did for Royal Gold in nineteen eighty seven. Oh, that's true. That's exactly right. Hundred dollar stock, you know. Yeah. So, as the market watches the development on the Robertson, and they start to get a handle on what this royalty could be worth, it could be a company maker. Now, yeah. how do we get from here to there? So, it's going to take you know some time for the project to be developed. And once they announce it in their financial statements, they're obligated to let the public know about it. So. Um, and also, they they have a, a technical report on CDAR, which uh, covers the whole pipeline, Cortez Hills, Gold Rush area. I tell I tell everyone go read that report. There's some fantastic information in there that talks about this whole area and what the potential is. It, it's it, it's enormous, and we have some other properties. We've got the enormous SAS, the JDN, the Eagle Claims. They're surrounding this area. The Eagle claims are between Robertson and Fire Creek, which is Klondex. The JDN claims adjoins Hilltop. That's about a two to three million ounce deposit. The barracks now drilling, and and um, I found that out because in that technical report it says they're drilling Hilltop. Uh, and the Norma Sass claims you could almost throw a rock into the pit of the old pipeline mine in Gold Acres, but it's right on the doorstep there. So we've got some strategically located projects. That we're, we're we're dusting off. We're looking at. We're probably going to do some exploration on it, and then we're getting um, submissions coming from all across the world. And you know, people wanted to know what we're going to do with that money, and so we're going to look at other projects as well. And mm-hmm. uh, so, build up a nice sized company. And and I think at some point. You got to think that Franco Nevada or Royal Gold is going to wake up. You know, where's their backyard? Where 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 would they want to have a royalty? Right? I mean, this right. is an unencumbered royalty with no cap. So yeah. in the next couple of years, it could be a takeover target. Yeah, it could very well be, David. Well, it, does, it certainly makes an awful lot of sense. And um, you know, again, I, I, as I look at this market cap, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I, I mentioned thirteen million, but it would be somewhat smaller than that if you roll the shares back by another four million shares or so. So we're really looking at a market cap right now that's underneath your cash value, plus you have yeah. the royalties. Yeah. Well, I think so. It is, it is a very, very little, if any, downside. Uh, yeah. And lots of upside uh, at this well, stage. That's the way I view cash. it. Value per share is like forty six or forty seven cents. So we're not even trading there. And then the market wants to see the deal concluded, and, yeah. and also what we're going to do. Um, but I, I would assume that we should trade up there, and the, this year at some point, hopefully higher. Yeah. And when do you think you might close on this transaction? What's well, your best guess? The, our, the the shareholders have voted, and you saw the numbers. They don't lie. Over ninety nine percent voted in favor, so it was a good endorsement. So now it's just housekeeping and making sure all the paperwork's all completed. So I, I would imagine in the next few weeks it should be concluded. 
David, your uh, I think all of your properties are in Nevada right now. Would you consider going somewhere else? I mean, outside of Nevada, say North America, somewhere, or Mexico? Well, or sure, why not? I mean, it depends on the project. Yeah, I mean, you're familiar with Mexico. You're operating down yeah. there uh, with the Vino, so Mexico, North America. I mean, I those places make me feel pretty good. Uh, Peru yeah. is a place that seems to be okay for now. Um, but anyway, I just, just just so you're open minded and uh, so you have a lot of uh, opportunities. I mean, certainly we're still we've seen the bottoms. I think in this gold market, we're we're certainly feeling good about things now. The juniors are up very nicely, but you still have a lot of companies out there that need money and could certainly use some of that uh, sixteen million dollars you you've got on your balance sheet now. Well, U.S. We're not going to be too hasty, and we're always going to be conservative and. I, w- I really want to learn more about this royalty and what their plans are. I mean, and they, <clears throat> when they modeled it, they only modeled, they didn't model 2.7 million ounces because they're looking at this as an acquisition, right? So they're looking mm-hmm. at reality. What can they mine? So based mm-hmm. on their PEA, they cut it in half. So the uh-huh. error rate was met with only one and a half million ounces. They said, wait till we, this concludes and they start drilling it. If they go back and start drilling uh, you know where they did last year, or below the Robertson, and our resources go to four or five or six million ounces. That royalty is going to be very attractive. And, uh, and what we do know you, we're uh, in elephant country. The pipeline is right beside us, Cortez right. Hills. We're surrounded by mines. So there is so a possibility of potential. Uh, there's a potential for some high grade uh, material at depth there, I suppose. Uh, Carlin yeah. Trend type of uh, situation. Well, the geologist told me last year, he goes, we're, we're, we're walking away from the, the Gold Ridge option, not because uh, we, we just proved anything. It's just, you know, the budget wasn't there. Sure, sure, yeah. So now that they well, own 100% of it, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to go back and redrill it. They're going to go back and look for the elephant is what they're going to do. Yeah. So it's uh, totally. it, it makes all the sense in the world. I was really happy to see this, David, and uh, I, I think uh, we're going to want to keep up with uh, with, with what yeah. you, what's going and on there. Have and time to build positions because though it's not in this year's budget. They're going to do some work, but next year is when they're going to do a major program. So I would imagine our stock will start you know, going up significantly next year when people get the news of what they're going to be doing. So people have time to accumulate this year. You got several things. You got, you know, you got a bull market in gold, which Michael Oliver once again reiterated a few minutes ago. And you have a real story, you know, with a company like Barrick behind you also. So it's uh, it's all good, they're, David. They're I'm not wanna... fooling around. They've got a no, whole they're... team. The team that, that won the Thayer Lindsay Award in Toronto at PDAC that won, found Gold Rush, 15 million ounce deposit across the valley, they're the ones that are going to run it. Right. Well, they're going to be looking for the team. elephant. What, yep. what is uh, Barrick, Barrick's producing? How many millions of ounces a year? And they've got to replace that. They've got to, they've got to find new ounces. It's, it's enormous. Well, yeah. I mean, I think they're around 6 million. They were up higher, but, you know, they got rid of a lot of mines. But this is the jewel in their crown, the, the Cortez and the Gold Strike, which is on the, uh, the uh, Carlin Trend, which is about 30 miles away. But this one produced, this uh, pipeline mine complex produces a million ounces of gold annually. And I think it's around, I think it's their lowest cost operation globally, yeah. uh, like five or $600 an ounce. Right. The Robertson is low-hanging fruit. So is there yeah. some sense, uh, David, of, of continuity from their project onto yours, possibly? We're directly adjoining, so they wouldn't yeah. even have to go on the main road. They could just put in haulage roads from our property. Yeah, yeah. No, I was there with your father years ago and, and peered over the valley there, and yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting, David. I want to thank you. Anything else you'd like to, to share with us about, about this story? Uh, just that I'm very, very excited for this new chapter in Coral, and, and I sure hope that people, you know, really pay attention to us and Barrick and what they're saying about the development, because I think we're going to add a lot more value as, as the project gets developed. So if people really want to dig into the fundamentals here, they can go to your website, uh, CoralGold.com. Well, we're creating or... a new website, so oh, okay. uh, yeah, it's limited right now, but there's right now. there'll be a new one coming up with more information, but... Um, I mean, like I said, if you go to CEDAR and you look at Barrick's technical report um, uh-huh. on the Cortez 
I think it was in March 21st it was uh, there. You can see how huge this thing. This is the beauty of 43101 where it did us a favor. They had yeah. an independent <laughs> firm do the technical report. The information disclosed in that report is tremendous. Yeah, you don't find that on their website. They, they're not obligated to report that, but it's in the technical report. So everyone should go go check it out. It's this is to get a sense of what of, of what might uh, what might be in the term in in the sense of a royalty for Coral Gold down the road. So, all right. Well, David, thank thank you very much. Any anything else? That's that's pretty much no, it, I guess. I just uh, want to thank everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, thank, thank you. you so. Yeah, well, thank you. And uh, again, uh, folks, it's uh, 27 cents U.S., uh, $13 million market cap. Uh, the company figures when it closes to bring in um, around $15.75 million U.S. So it's probably is more cash on the balance sheet than it's selling for right now, plus or relatives. So thanks very much, David, and we'll look forward to keeping up with this story into the future. Thank you very much. 